Bernardino Street Station is a contentious novel within the sci-fi fantasy community due to its inherent political undertones. Over overtones is more appropriate. The author, China Meville, is quite the outspoken activist, and it's very fair to say that that is heavily reflected within his writing. As a critic, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to the best way to handle very political writing and review. Whether to let agreement or disagreement with ideas reflect your overall rating or not, there's no right or wrong answer to that. It's just a subjective choice. For me, Despite agreeing and disagreeing with some elements of a lot of the messaging of this book, I've largely decided to put that all aside and look at this from a narrative, world building, pacing, structure, yada, 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 yada lens. But now that we got that out of the way, what is this story? Well, the broad overview is we follow a fringe scientist, Isaac, who is asked by a member of a bird-like species to fix his ability to fly. Apparently, this bird committed some kind of crime within its culture and was punished by having their ability to fly be removed. And the story itself takes a lot of twists and turns from there I will not spoil. Though what I can say at this point is the world building we explore through this narrative is absolutely fascinating. As someone who has consumed a lot of fantasy worlds in my lifetime, none quite struck me like this. There are elements of steampunk and the usage of fantasy creatures, obviously heavily inspired by real world mythology or just straight up lifted out from. But what I think I enjoyed the most about this world building is because of the story we are following, we get a very pedestrian view of it. And I'm not sure if China Meville really wanted to deliver that. What it results in though is a really on the ground view from beginning to end of the beat to beat life of the world China Meville is creating. Fortunately, we also have a very scientific overlay that allows us to explore the literal biology of creatures in this world due to the fact that we are following a character who is this fringe scientist. Just getting to the point, it's a very unique lens, at least as far as my readings for fantasy worlds, to explore the fantastical. And that was definitely the most enjoyable part of this book for me. Though there were several other elements I thoroughly enjoyed as well, including China Meville's writing style, mainly because it does feel so distinct. In the world of fantasy right now, there are a ton of people who are simplifying prose, just allowing their books to be as digestible as possible and not trying to sound super poetic or beautiful. Meanwhile, China Meville is over in the other side of things, just punching a bag really, really hard. <laughs> this guy is angry and he is very politically opinionated. That comes through not only in the themes of the story, but directly out of character mouths continually. And I get there are gonna be people who disagree a lot with what China Meville is saying. I certainly didn't agree with every single point. I insist though that everyone should pick up different readings from across the political spectrum, either to explore your own beliefs or understand where those where you disagree with are coming from. It's very valuable, especially if you're someone who frequently gets in debates with the other side. And I'd also like to point out, I think he does a really good job of having various themes or ideas put forth, but always drawing the distinction between his idea versus the character's ideology. Does that make sense? And China Meville wrote so passionately and heavy handedly that it, it just felt like I was constantly being lectured, but in a very enjoyable, well paced and structured way throughout the story. It's 2022. So someone's going to leave a comment that's like, there's not politics here. Blah, blah, blah. Stop reading into it. And you, my good sir, are it. <laughs> the political messaging of this story is so deeply layered on top, it's probably going to be the number one reason many people do not like it. Even if you do align completely with what China Meville is saying, there are also people who just don't like political messaging very heavy handed in their reading, in their fantasy reading. But I hope you can see how those first two points coming together allow for something actually to be really special here. This book digested like The Master and Margarita and a more complex version of Jim Butcher. Genuinely in my head, it's like you take those those two and blend them together. Even categorizing this book is rather tricky because clearly it's fantasy and urban fantasy, I'd go as far as say. But beyond that, it doesn't really belong with that pack. All right, all right, I know a bunch of people are probably thinking, but Daniel, what about the story? 
I was very catharsisized by the end. It's a high stakes narrative where the author isn't backing down from not only punishing his characters, but realizing the full extent of some of the horrors he's raising within this world. It is rich in character decision, always being the motivating factor, and the setup and payoff continually from beginning to end is deliciously rewarding. I personally would have liked things to be a little more subtle throughout, but it provided a level of personality that was also very rewarding to get through. Pacing wise, this book does not overstay its welcome and it carries the reader quite consistently with the strongest elements of the writing staying at the forefront. At no point did I feel completely abandoned by what the author had built and I wasn't just sitting waiting for the narrative to kick back into gear. Its structure is quite healthy. It's a lean and straight to the point story. Because it's so ideologically motivated, there was a huge risk of this being bloated to high hell, but China Melville completely avoided that, which is wonderful. And the resolution of the story, I'll talk a bit more about in a spoiler section, but I would just say it left me not only emotionally satisfied, but thinking. Before we get into spoilers though, I would say I give this book a 7.8 out of 10. It definitely knows what it's attempting to do and I wouldn't change anything as a critic, but personally, I just do not enjoy books that are this punchy in terms of their overall purpose. Mad respect though. I don't know if I'm motivated to pick up more China Metville, but I'm very happy I got this quite different reading experience under my belt. Okay, so spoilers, three, two, one, the resolution. So it turns out the crime Birdman here committed was isn't as complex as we were led to think, and it was boils down to the R word that YouTube will punish me for putting forth here. And we see Isaac who has sacrificed so much and had people around him pay the price for his kind of fringe activities just walk away. This book focuses so heavily on the institution versus the individual and whether or not it is okay or right to abide by systems you disagree with or you can even pass judgment on a system you are not a part of. And having this book come down to at the very end in a final chapter called Justification, a character having to make a decision on whether or not to work in a way that would subvert justice that's in a system he is not a part of. It's an extremely singular decision, but it encapsulates so much of what was covered here fantastically. I mean, this book is layered with explorations of classism, othering we do to anyone who is not like us, and the cruelty that humanity is capable of, or all sentient beings really, uh, when it comes to our actions. And that just falls into what I'm talking about with China Manville, just unrelentingly punching you as the reader with all the ideas, and then tying in so aggressively this resolution to it, where he's forcing his main character to battle with the ideas of do I uphold this system's justice or do I maintain my own personal ability and agency to undo what has been cast down here. And it's nuanced, it's aggressive, it's blunt, but God damn, is it thought provoking. I'm very torn on whether or not I will continue more China Meville because it didn't leave me with like a happy taste in my mouth seeing how Lin was so, you know, destroyed by this story. And there were people that just died. It's like a, oh wow, such great efforts for just tragedy. There was, there was no joy provided by this reading experience. But that was just my thoughts on Perdido Street Station by China Meville. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know if this was your favorite China Meville book or if there's another one I should pick on up. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon for like support what I do here. Have a good one y'all, peace.